We're now here at the conclusion to our big first key. The key of setting up your intro. We have talked about setting up characters, world building, magical elements, the villain or opposing force, and the plot. We've talked about setting all that stuff up and how you need to set up in your intro. But the key to all these working, you have to do all of them, but the key to work, making them all work is that of not bored in your audience. It might sound kind of stupid to say that, like, of course you're not going to bored your audience. But the fact of the matter is, it is said that the human brain is now can only stay focused on something for 30 seconds before getting distracted. In the opening minutes of your movie, if your audience, in the first 30 seconds, now it's not going to be 30 seconds, it's going to be a lot longer in movies, then you need to get your audience invested in wanting to watch this movie, making them not bored of what they're watching. The moment they get bored, they're going to fall asleep or they're going to turn it off. This is a bit, the 30 second thing is a big thing when it comes to YouTubers. As a YouTuber, I have to try to put a jumpy first 30 seconds. First 30 seconds, I need to like, talk about stuff as fast as I can so that I can get people who want to watch more of my video. And if any of you guys are YouTubers, that's an advice I strongly recommend you implement that also into your videos. 30 seconds is as long as you need to set up and make sure that people are invested in your video. Anyways guys, hello, extremely intelligent lambs, and welcome back to the movie night review. Let's finish this finale, how to set up your intro, with By the Lord of the Rings worked, and the Rings of Power didn't. For those who have been following this channel through this whole process, I broke down all the keys to making a great intro in my video, uncovering the secrets to epic movies. What is the first key? I will leave a link to that video and to the whole playlist of all the of my educational content leading up to this video. This is the big finale, talking about my favorite movie series versus The Rings of Power, which is supposed to be a ripoff of the Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna say a ripoff because that's the best you can get to. It was made to live off the hype of the Lord of the Rings and that's the only reason why it was made. So without further ado, let's jump in and talk about this. So I, due to copyright reasons, I will not be able to actually show the clips in their full form. I might be able to slip in some moments in, as I talk about it, I will slip in some moments in where I can say, here's a clip as an example of what I'm talking about, here's a clip as an example of what I'm talking about. So let's jump in by just, hopefully I can in this moment put in two little clips of each to show you what I'm talking about. It began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Seven to the Dwarf Lords, miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men who I above all else desire power. So when the great foe Morgoth destroyed the very light of our home. No, so what is your opinion on that? I don't know about you, but I had this feeling of one felt epic, and it felt that it could draw, it was drawing you into this this like mystical story and all. The other one felt like a cheap riff off, or just boring, bland, and dry. We also, from this opening moment, right, we see in the Rings of Power, she was saying that the trees of Eleanor, how Melkor or Morgoth had taken the life from them. Right now, I'm not going to get into what actually happened in the Simulian and all that kind of stuff because it's like. It's a whole different thing, the whole complicated story of the trees of Eleanor. I'm not gonna really get into that right now, but let's just talk about. I don't know about you, but yes, based off of what I know in the books, but based off what I hear in this TV show, one of the biggest questions why should I care? He took the life out of these trees, like. They gave us light, but it looks like you guys have sunlight. Do you need those trees? And if I have any fellow Tolkien fans in the chat, please tell me because I would love to be able to say, Hi guys, welcome to this channel. I'm a big Tolkien fan. Anyways, but, and you're probably going to type down all of you like, Well, it's because of this reason. And I understand all the reasons, 
What I'm going off is just what they say in the opening of the Wings of Power. Even how much I could go on for hours and I will put out hours of videos on talking about this stuff. When I start my channel on books, once we reach, you know, the percentage, once we reach the amount that we are going to reach when we start that channel. Because I'm not, I'm not going to promise that that's the one we're going to start when we reach the 10,000 because it depends on what the audience, what my whole viewers want. If I if I have nine thousand people saying they want to start, a, they want to see me start a gaming channel, I'm going to start that first. Anyways, but the point is, yes, I get what's actually is happening. But the point is, why should we care? The difference between what we see in the Lord of the Rings opening and what we see in this one is, we see a reason why we should care. The Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring. To control all others. And into this ring, he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. These lords were deceived. And because of that, they had... They were all being controlled by Sauron. Based on what it says in that opening. And Sauron was destroying the whole world. So we see like, okay, yeah, that's an honest reason why to care. But based on this opening in The Wings of Power, why do we really care about the trees of Eldor? Because the fact of the matter is, this, in our mind, based off of this, they don't give us a reason to feel any connection to it. This is something we're going to be talking about later in the video, talking about the Lord of the Rings books and Cimmerillion and how that applies here later on in the video. But for right now, the, what I'll say is, that the Rings of Power just assume that they're going to be able to get the Tolkien fans in there and they're going to understand why it should be important. But the fact of the matter is I'm going to put that aside and just think about what it says here. Why should we care about the Trees of Elm? No one cares. This actress is He's saying this is the most boring, right? And there's another thing I brought up uh, I want to bring up. The visuals. Look at Lord of the Rings and look at the Rings of Power. The visuals are completely like, yes, there's moments I hear that in The Rings of Power where it looks stunning. As people say, it looks stunning until you pause it and then you see it and you're like, actually, that doesn't look as stunning. But this opening is bland as bland can be. It's very bland looking. There's nothing visually that's going to catch your attention. Versus in The Lord of the Rings when you see the elves and you see the men and you see the dwarves. While it's in a more bland looking background, there's something to, like liveliness. But you kind of have this feeling of this grandness going on, like you see these different people, right? So now we're going to skip to when you see the the battle. You hear the voiceover still going. A last alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of Mordor. And on the slopes of Mount Doom, they fought for the freedom of Middle-earth. And a legion of elves went to war. The difference here is this. We have basically the only shots you see is this crowd of people and this dragon fighting with this eagle up in the air. And that's really what you get. You don't get a good glimpse of the enemy and all that kind of stuff. Versus the epicness of the Lord of the Rings battle. We have sword fighting, we have, we get a good glimpse at what these I orcs look like. Know. We get a good glimpse of Sauron, we get a good glimpse, glimpse at all this. We really understand who the enemy is, based on what we see in that opening. Another thing upon, uh, on that same topic is this, uh, the difference between, we kind of got a glimpse in the Rings of Power that she has a brother, that her brother was probably captured and killed in this battle. And she has a hatred for Sauron because of that. Okay, cool. But that's all we learn about anyone. You don't get to know any characters in this. Versus in Lord of the Rings. We meet multiple characters. Some of the, we don't meet all the main characters, but we do meet people like Elrond in this battle. We meet Sauron, we meet all the orcs. We really get a glimpse of what we're talking about. Who is this enemy that we're going up against? While we don't meet the dwarves and we don't meet hobbits and the wizards and stuff like that 
we get a glimpse of some of the characters, not even all, not the characters we're actually going to be spending our whole time with, but we actually get to know somewhat who these characters are. The lineage behind Aragorn, all this type of stuff. We really get to understand what we're dealing with. The other thing is that this scene in The Rings of Power versus the scene in Lord of the Rings is that the Lord of the Rings thinks it's important to the story. The Rings of Power one is a complete, just supposed to be a ripoff. People like to be open in the Lord of the Rings. So that means they're going to have to, they're going to like this one too, right? No, because you have to make it a lot bland and boring. You can't just, the reason, yes, technically I did, this is not the exact opening to The Rings of Power, so that gives, I can give them that, but the other opening, the original, the real opening to the Wings of Power, I don't think anyone really talks about, and when people talk about it, they just think it's kind of stupid, it's just Galadriel sailing a paper boat down a stream, and talking to her brother about how she needs to be brave and stand up for herself, and all that kind of good stuff. It's just like, why is this in that? The point, the big point I'm trying to get at is, the Lord of the Rings, the opening of the other movie, the opening of the Fellowship of the Ring, that opening is very important. You've seen the journey of the ring and how it gets to Bilbo. We see the power of the ring and what it holds over people. And we meet Sauron. We meet the elves. We, get under we understand that there are other rings. We learn a lot about stuff that's really important to the overall story. So, the only thing we learn from this that's actually important for the overall story is that Sauron exists and that Galadriel doesn't like him because he killed her brother. It's not, while well, some... While well, some fans of this might say, oh yeah, that's a really important thing and that drives this whole story. It's not that important, this opening. They could have cut out this opening from The Rings of Power and it wouldn't change nothing. If you cut out the opening of The Lord of the Rings from it, you will lose a lot. That's something we can write down. If it is born, if you can cut it, and it won't make a difference. If you can't cut it because it's important to the story, then it's probably not going to be boring to your audience. Because your audience who actually wants to see this movie will want to see this important part of the story because it is very important that you understand what the ring is and all the kind of stuff in this opening. And it's a very long opening, but I was looking over it and I'm like, I was watching it again. And I'm like, wow, this opening is amazing. It's a very long opening, but I don't think I ever get bored while watching the opening of The Lord of the Rings because it's just so enjoyable. It begins with a battle, it has all this epic parts going through it, and it's just an awesome journey you see in the opening minutes. As the same way with the character, it also doesn't do a jo good job setting up your villain as much. You don't really get to see a good glimpse of what the villain looks like in the Rings of Power, in the opening moments. You don't really get a glimpse besides you know that Sauron exists. They just mention Morgoth so that they can say, hey, we mentioned Morgoth, and not really actually important. I was hoping, when I heard that they were going to make The Rings of Power in the first place, I was first excited about the watching that movie, that watching that, because I'm like, they can't destroy it, they have to make it good, like, they, like, I, I was naive enough to say, they can't make a bad Lord of the Rings thing, like, they're not that stupid, but they are, they are that stupid that they wouldn't even destroy the Lord of the Rings, it's a really sad thing that they did that, but they did. But they really don't set up that much, like, who cares who Morgoth is. No one knows who this Morgoth is. Why did you just mention He's the truth of Alanor? Because they had to cl click off that quota of saying, Hey, this is something that happened in the, uh, in the Cimmerillion. See, we are on source material because we mentioned something from the Cimmerillion. As a Tolkien fan, I should care that you tried to mention something that's really cool and a cool backstory. Morgoth, I wish you could have, instead of Yes, you're making it about the Rings of Power, and you're making it about the creation of the rings, but I kind of wanted to see, we saw Sauron before, I would love to see people make an interpretation of Melkor, or Morgoth, I would love to see that, seeing Sauron's master, the one who, his, the, he's the lesser, seeing the, the creator of the Balrogs, Seeing him would have been so much fun, and we could have, I would have loved to see a season where it's just completely just the story of Baron and Luthien. It would have been awesome, I would have loved to see that. But instead we get straight to the Rings of Power because that's what people want to see. They just want to see Sauron and they actually don't care to show anything from older than that. And, I don't know about some Tolkien fans, but in my mind, 
I'm also kind of glad they didn't go with the first age because of the reason that they couldn't because they're gonna they couldn't they were just destroyed. They're not going to make a good story based on the first age. And I kind of agree with what Tolkien when he says that he never wants to see a movie adaptation of his books. And while I think they did a really good job with the Lord of the Rings. It really proves it when I started getting closer to the release date of the Rings of Power, and like, I see where Tolkien's coming from. If they are going to refuse to follow his values at all, and just make this woke series, then they, I would agree with Tolkien, and I don't want to see my, if my books ever made into woke Hollywood movies. Hopefully, people will try to reach out, hopefully, if I, when I write those books, if people try to reach out and talk about, hey, we want to make a movie a bit, I would say, before I can sign anything, I want to see a full script and see what you're talking about. And see if it's worthy of my books. Because the fact of the matter is, you need to follow the values of the writer. And if you can't follow that, then there's no point in you making this movie. Anyways, so what can we learn from this? What can we learn about how to not bored your audience? As I talked about before, I we want to make sure to follow all the steps we have built up in the last in the previous videos set up characters how to set up worlds how to set up you know all your magical mystical elements all that kind of stuff and you really want to like do that well but then further on as i talked about before in this video as i talked about previous in this video if it has any way and this is the big thing you can take from this video if there is any way that you can take a scene out of the movie and it would work then it does not deserve to be in the movie the opening is not important enough to the story then most of the audience is going to be really bored of it. now the fact of the matter is there is a difference between a youtube video and a movie because a lot of times with movies i've only found myself a couple times actually turning off a movie because it was too boring to keep watching most of the time I do, if I start a movie, I'm going to finish the movie. With a YouTube video, while I personally try to finish a YouTube video at start, I will courtesy for the creator because they put in the effort to make this video. I want to see what they have to say. But if it's really going nowhere and I feel like I am not getting anything out of it, I will shut off the video. And for anyone who are new to this channel, you can probably agree with me, I'm probably not the easiest person to listen to. Versus the people who have been on this video, who have been following me for a while, might have this, might find this easier to watch because of the reason that they have been following me for a while. And I found that with my personal life, when I'm watching YouTube videos, if it's from someone like vidIQ or, or Closer Look or like different channels like that that I follow, I can find myself watching an hour and a half video. But if it's from some random channel that I don't know that well, it's going to be a lot harder for me to finish the video because of the reasons. It's always easier to just watch someone you know and trust. Now that I've talked about that, let's talk about the whole thing that I brought up before about books and all. The Lord of the Rings stands on its own. While I'm a big fan of the books and I always will say and I will force my kids to read the books before watching the movies, all that kind of stuff, I will have to admit that if you watch the movies, you will understand what's going on. With the Rings of Power, they have a bunch of little details that you won't get unless you read the Cinderella. And the point of that is just, look, we can get the Tolkien fans in here because, oh, look, we are so cool. We have stuff about Melkor and all that kind of stuff in there. We're so cool. But the fact of the matter is, they're not by doing that. They're not, actually, because real Tolkien fans will be like, uh, no, we don't want to watch this. This is junk. This is not what Lord, what the land, the lands of Tolkien is supposed to be like. This is not Middle Earth for, to us. Tolkien would not have liked this. We do not like this. Listen, what you got wrong, and just talk about everything they did wrong instead. So the important things is even when you're making an adaptation of a movie, always make sure that. You make it so it can stand on its own, so that people don't don't have to read the book to understand it. And 
They don't. You can put little clues in, but do it because you want to just show honor to the source material and not actually because you just want to be cool with the cool kids. Even that probably Lord of the Rings fans are not considered the cool kids, they're considered the nerds, but who cares? I believe we were the cool kids, and so that means we're the cool kids. So, anyways, guys, so what do you think? Do you think that the Rings of Power did a good job? Do you think, did you watch the Rings of Power? Tell you a little secret, I still have not watched the Rings of Power. I will watch it probably closer to when the second season. Hopefully there's never a second season, but I might watch it eventually to say, here's my review on it. Right now, I have not watched it. A little thing. I have the Cimmerian right here. It's an awesome copy with some uh, some beautiful, beautiful artwork in it. I love that copy of the Cimmerian. There's some other copies too reimagined. that are awesome. I will have to eventually in that book channel talk about different copies of the Cimmerian and my favorite ones and all the good stuff because it's a broad thing. The Cimmerian is so awesome and I love it. Anyways, ha have you guys watched The Rings of Power? Have you guys read The Cimmerillion? If you guys haven't read The Cimmerillion, I strongly recommend you guys check it out because it is beautiful, beautiful book. And all Tolkien fans must Artless read it. Artless. But if you are don't want to watch uh, read books like The Cimmerillion, I guess don't. It's kind of a long read because there's a lot of like long names it, it you have to go you have to really understand what's going on to get it anyways so guys due to next week being holy week and the week after that being easter i'm only going to be for the next two weeks putting out videos that are religious Artless so i'm gonna I next week i'll probably like, do stuff like review the seasons of the chosen tell you my thoughts on the season of the chosen the chosen so far so that's the first three seasons talk about maybe some other religious movies i like stuff like that and then after that, I will be continuing, going back to my normal schedule of the education topic, the personal opinion of mine, Music and the recap. Really we'll go back to that in two weeks. But for right now, just for these two weeks, just look forward to seeing these views for movies, TV shows, and stuff, and more religious stuff on this channel. If you are not a religious person, you can just not watch those if you want. I, as a religious person, I want to, I mean, this channel is dedicated to God. I want to be able to give back to God Artless somewhat, and I that's own. one way I'm going to do it, is by putting out these religious ones for the next two weeks. Thank you guys for watching. This has been the Movie Night Review. Peter Wade, signing off.